How about if I share with you a, sto a story of myself with the Rebbe? Because that, that's easy to remember, and that's me. By the way, um, yeah. <clears throat> I was 12 years old. From when I was seven, my father used to bring me every Simchas Torah to the Rebbe for, uh, for the special holiday, for the Akafas. I've, thank God, very, very vivid memories of the many times I was by the Rebbe for Simchas Torah. And I'm eternally grateful to my father for having done that, because now I'm the father of seven-year-olds and former seven-year-olds, thank God. And I know what it means to schlep a kid on a plane and have to take care of him in 770 for a few days myself. Uh, the, anyway, my father did it every year from when I was seven years old. <clears throat> One year, um, I got separated from my father sometime in the middle of uh, Simchas Torah. I couldn't find him. And if, you, if you're familiar with the videos uh, or the pictures of 770, 770 is a huge room with like bleachers on both sides and all the Chassidim standing in the middle. But on Shabbos Yom Tev, it would be like three quarters. The first quarter would be empty. Long story short, I was in that space waiting. The Rebbe was fabringing, but I didn't have a place. The Rebbe was speaking. And some of the New York kids, Rebbe Pinney, are you from New York? Yes, I am. You guys were scary as kids. Let me tell you, to a kid from the Midwest coming to visit 770, you were a scary bunch. Anyway, the New York kids were running around. And so I pulled over one of the kids and I said, Sounds like the Rebbe is screaming. Do you hear the Rebbe's voice like over the bleachers? He's like, I don't know. But if you climb, out on, you climb through there, you'll come out right by the Rebbe. Anyway, I don't know how I had the guts. I climbed through under this long table and I came out nowhere else than six inches away from the Rebbe on his right side on the floor. Okay, and that was a place that children were allowed. There were no children then, maybe because it was a unique time. And the Rebbe started speaking about the last verse of the Torah, which speaks about Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses. It speaks about all the miracles he did for the Jewish people. And he did it all before the eyes of the Jewish people. And Rashi, the commentary says, what does that refer to? That his heart soared and he smashed the tablets. He smashed the luchas. And the Rebbe was asking a list of questions. Is that the greatest thing Moshe Rabbeinu did? And did he have to do it before the eyes of the Jewish people? It's the last thing of the Torah. Whole list of questions. And I'm, I'm, doing the short version here. Anyway, the Rebbe went on to explain. And I have to tell you, as a child, I did not typically, I was not able to concentrate. I would not typically be able to understand, but anybody could have understood this. The Rebbe spoke with such passion. He explained, why did Moses break the tablets when he came down from Mount Sinai? His heart soared and he broke the luchos. Why did he do it? Because when he came down, the Jewish people were worshiping the golden calf. And he knew that he was holding in his hands their death sentence. So he broke it so that they wouldn't get in trouble, right? Because it said, you sh thou shall not have any gods, any other gods. So that's why he did it. He did it. He sacrificed himself, and he sacrificed that which Hashem had bestowed him, had given him, in order to save the Jewish people. And everyone went on to explain, this is what a true Jewish leader is, that he's ready to sacrifice himself. He's ready to do something that's potentially against what Hashem would have wanted, just to save the Jewish people. And this is the greatest thing you could say about Moshe Rabbeinu. Now, as the Rebbe was saying this, he began to cry. And he began to cry. And there were times that the Rebbe cried a little bit. It was very rare, but even then. But the Rebbe began to sob as he was speaking. And he was explaining, this is what a Jewish leader is. He's ready to sacrifice everything for the Jewish people. And he did this before the eyes of the Jewish people because it's a lesson for every Jew of Avas Yisrael. And there was a point at which the Rebbe could not continue speaking. He was crying so hard. And I'm sitting there on the floor, and I don't think anybody else could have seen this, maybe one or two other people, which is why I'm so, I share, try and share it whenever I can. Because if you've seen the pictures, there are people standing, sitting behind the Rebbe. There's a table, and there are people down there. But how many people were between the Rebbe and the table? Not many during that talk. I, I was probably the only one, but maybe there was another one or other, two other people. And as the Rebbe was explaining this about how Moshe Rabbeinu is Avas Yisrael, his love for a fellow Jew, and it's a lesson to all of us, I remember watching from the corners of the Rebbe's beard, drip, 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 the tears falling onto his kapata, and looking up and seeing just drip. drip. That's how intensely the Rebbe was crying and trying to teach us what. Avas Yisrael is and what true Jewish leadership is. So we're now a few days before Gimel Tamos. There are so many things we need to le learn from the Rebbe, but perhaps first and foremost, something that any of us can do is to increase in our Avas Yisrael. And I just want to finish with one thing, and that is 
we have the ability today to learn from the Rebbe even more than before Gimel Tamas, to, to a certain extent. Obviously, if you were there, you would come to a Fabregen and you would listen to the satellite link up or whatever it is. But today, any person can learn directly from the Rebbe through technology, right on your smartphone, right on your computer, wherever and whenever you want, in the comfort of your home with subtitles, perfectly curated for you. <clears throat> we need to take advantage of this opportunity to be able to learn directly from the greatest Torah teacher there is and to be inspired by him. And may we be reunited with the Rebbe and all of our loved ones with the coming of Mashiach now. Thank you very much, uh, Rabbi Elkanah. That was really great, Rabbi Elkanah Shmutkin. The ex executive director of GEM, Jewish Educational Media, who again is archiving all the memories of the Rebbe and all the teachings. And we hope that each and every one of you tonight who are listening will uh, make sure to log on to one of the many Chabad uh, websites and onto GEM and continue. There are so many speakers and resources for you to study the Rebbe's teaching. I want to welcome each and every one of you who joined from all over from uh, Rabbi Yolish Gans, Rabbi uh, ben -Zian, singer of the Chabad of the Lord of the by the Sea. I saw Rabbi Natan Grunblatt from Argentina, Rabbi Shimon and Druzier from Chabad of uh, Century Village, uh, um, Young Israel Century Village, Chabad. Shui Bistin, Rabbi Shui Bistin, I saw on Facebook Live in, from Parkland. Rabbi Yankee Denberg, who's always my helper from Chabad Southwest Coral Springs, and Rabbi y Yossi Reitzik from Chabad of West Boynton. Rabbi Kabul Silverberg from Chabad of Tamarack and Rabbi Schmerling from Chabad of Venice. I thank everyone from wherever you're joining. It means so much that you join me. Again, next week, next week we have an amazing class. It's exact, it's on the yard site. It's on the anniversary of the Rebbe's pa passing. So we have two great lecturers. We have Rabbi Label Shapiro, who's the president. He's the head of the, uh, of the Rabbinical Council of Miami. He's uh, the dean of the, of the yeshiva here, and he's a, a true scholar and a great le lecturer. And Rabbi Yossi Lu, a dear colleague and friend of mine from Peach Tree City, uh, Georgia. So we have a wonderful program. Next week, the Rebbe's legacy, the Rebbe's leadership, the Rebbe's influence, and I hope you will en you'll join me then. Rabbi uh, Elkana, I, I can't thank you enough. It was really informative, and, and, and we see from you how truly the Rebbe's words from you know, from early on, the Rebbe had the vision of, of embracing the technology. And thanks to you and, and all of your innovation, you're taking the Rebbe's words and teachings and spreading it out to the, as it says, when the Baal Shem Tov asked the Mashiach, Mashiach, when are you going to come? He says, when the, your teachings are, are spread forth. And we see, thanks to you, Sure enough, the teachings of the Rebbe and about Mashiach are truly, you're able to access it all across the globe. So there's no reason why Mashiach doesn't come this very moment. And hopefully this Gimel Tammuz, we will be reunited with the Rebbe, with the coming of Mashiach and the rebuilding of the third and final Holy Temple. Thank you again, Elkanah. Thank you everybody else for joining. And thank you all the Chabad houses that helped make this possible. See you next time, 7.30 Wednesday night.